All right, hey guys, today we're taking a look at the GB USB smart card from EMS. Uh, this is a smart card in the literal sense. There is no SD card slot. You have to flash the games directly to the card's internal memory itself, or internal storage, sorry, itself. Uh, it's a pretty interesting option. Uh, you don't see many flash cartridges for older systems out now. This one lets you play uh, original Game Boy games, dual mode games, and Game Boy Color games. So it's actually pretty interesting. So um, right out of the box, you get this card, and it doesn't come with a USB cable. But I went around, I went ahead and bought my own um, from the same seller, and uh, it's just standard mini USB, so it's not hard to find. I just have, just want to make sure it was compatible. This card can hold 64 megabytes of data, but it's actually divided into two pages. So each page has its own separate storage and. Basically, each page has its own save file. So if you wanted to store two games on there, you can store one game per page. If you wanted to store multiple games, you can store three to one page and four to the other. Um, but unfortunately, you only get one save file per page. So unless you're doing some modifications, that means you only get two save files no matter how many games you have installed. So that means for most people, you'll only really be using two games at once, which isn't a huge deal, but that's very different than the SD card based flash cartridges people are probably more used to. But it's not all bad, because this thing actually uses flash memory and SRAM, that means that every single time that you want to back up your save file, you don't actually have to do it on your computer. If you have a mega memory card or a monster brain, you can just back it up fairly like that, since it pretty much emulates how a cartridge would actually behave. Let's go ahead and take a look inside real quick. I'm just going to open this up, and as you can see, yes, it does use a battery back save, just like many Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Luckily for this, you don't actually have to solder the batteries. You can see it has this little tab like you see on the computer motherboard, and you can easily remove it. All right, so the first thing you'll notice if you just go ahead and boot this up or as soon as you open up the package is it doesn't actually boot because, again, all the games have to be stored in a flash memory and it will boot them directly as if you were running them on an actual cartridge. So let's go ahead and load up the software right now and see how to flash the games. The hardest part about getting this software working is probably installing the drivers. No matter how hard I tried, I could not get them to work on Windows 10. Later on, I'll probably make an update video about that. But as you can see, the software is actually pretty straightforward. It lists the pages you have on your card, it lists what's stored in them, and it has many options to export save files, import save files, and import games, and even dump them. So what we're gonna do is we can see here that I have something already stored in page one. I did that off camera. So we're gonna store a game to page two, and then we're gonna go ahead and flash it to the card. Simply just click this button here to load up your game and then just wait for it to flash and then disconnect. It should be noted though that you should never have your game cartridge plugged into your Game Boy while trying to flash it. Don't have it plugged into anything for the USB cable. You can even write a save file to the cartridge if you want. All you have to do is click the right SRAM button and then choose your save file and then you can have it flash to the cartridge. All right, once you have your game is flash, let's go ahead and load it up in your Game Boy. And when you turn it on, it should boot whatever's in page one first. So in my case, uh, what's in page one is Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. It loads up just fine and plays perfectly. So that's actually pretty nice. If you want to switch to page two, it's a little bit more difficult, but not really that hard. All you have to do is just turn off your Game Boy and turn it on. As soon as you see the Game Boy logo, just turn it off, turn it back on again. You get a pretty big window for when you have to do this, but all you have to do is just do that, just simply power cycle it at the Nintendo logo, and you'll be booted into whatever's in page two. Now, as you'll probably see, um, some games don't actually run perfectly. It's not a ton of them. From what I tested, only about one of the games didn't actually load properly, but it's an easy fix for this. Unfortunately, it's not actually released by EMS themselves, but a third party actually made patches for the games that have problems. So all you have to do is download the patch, um, Download Lunar IPS and simply patch the game and you're ready to go. Just reflash the patched game and it should load up just fine. As you can see here, after patching, the game loads up with no difficulty and my save file even works too, so that's nice. Now the other thing that we were talking about, I talked about before was multiple games. Yes, we even with the default software, you can install multiple games to the same page but they all share one save file slot. So every time you try to save in one game, it will overwrite everything else on that same page. There's a third party solution for this, but it doesn't actually seem to be perfect. It causes some problems. Well, let's go ahead and look up how to do it anyway. The first thing you'll need is you'll need this third party um, EMS flasher. That will actually give you the option to 
flash multiple games and use multiple save files. It operates just like the old one, so you don't have to relearn anything. Simply pick the games you want to um, have flash, just add them one at a time. And make sure you don't mix Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. If you want to have Game Boy Color games in Game Boy games, make sure they're both in separate slots. You can't have Game Boy Color and Game Boy games both in the same slot. All right, then just let it write, and it'll take a long time because it's going to have to write multiple files instead of just one. And once you're done with that page, if you want to flash the other page for multiple files too, and then just go ahead and boot it up and see how it goes. So this is the first time we're booting it up in multiple game mode with a mod. It's letting us know that we have one save file in the slot and it's not set up for multiple yet. So next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go to SRAM Manager by pressing the button that tells right here. And then we're going to have to go and manually delete all the entries so we can make space for our multiple saves. Just go through them one at a time and then you should have it completely empty and you should be able to save your games. So let's go ahead and try booting up the first game. Alright, and once you boot up your Game Boy, you'll see a list of games that are installed in the current page you're in. And you can simply just select them and boot them up, and you're good to go. You can play them, you can save, and they each have their own individual save files, so you don't have to worry about them overlapping with each other. Game Boy Color games work well too. You just gotta remember that Game Boy Color games and dual, uh, have to be on a different page than Game Boy games. Dual mode games can be on either one, but Game Boy and Game Boy Color have to be on separate ones. Also, don't forget when you're flashing Game Boy Color games, you have to check that color checkbox. Otherwise, it'll try to run them in classic mode and most of them will probably crash. So as long as you check that color box for your um, Game Boy Color games, you should be good to go. ROM hacks work well too, which is awesome, um, unless you play ROM hacks on your original hardware. Unfortunately, you can't use ROM hacks with the um, fixed patches. So if you have a game that has a major problem running on the um, flash cartridge, and you try to use a ROM hack on it, it will just not work. You can't uh, apply that patch to a patched game. You probably have to actually contact the mod developer and try to get him to uh, incorporate the patch, which I doubt, because I don't think many people actually still developing mods for original Game Boy games. So final thoughts. Is this thing worth buying? This thing is $45 um, and the EverDrive is just like about uh, $50 more. So what makes this different than the EverDrive? Is it worth it? Well, I think this is actually worth it. It has some nice features that the EverDrive is not. For instance, I don't believe with the EverDrive you can actually use the unit to back up your actual cartridge games. With this and the Monster Brain, you can't. You can import your Pokemon from the actual cartridge and put them on your PC or even import them to your 3DS. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, uh, it works with a Game Boy Player. Okay. It works with a Super Game Boy and lets you use the palette if you only have one game in there. It has some nice features. The downside is, with, although it does support multiple saves, you're still limited to 64 megabytes, which is a lot smaller than even the smallest SD card you can buy today at 2 gigabytes. Also another disadvantage is, in order to actually switch through the pages, you have to manually turn the unit off and back on again. There's no returning the menu. And another thing is, you don't get you, the only way you can back up your save files is using the computer, and it requires drivers and stuff. So there are a bunch of disadvantages. But one, again, it's half the price of the next competitor. It's the EverDrive. Uh, it's the easiest one that you can possibly find nowadays, and it still lets you play some games you normally wouldn't be able to play. So it depends how many games you actually want to be able to play on your 3DS. If you want to be able to play your entire library. Maybe you might want to consider saving up for the $100 EverDrive. If you just want to play two or three, or maybe just ten, uh, then it may be worth it. So, But one major um, point you need to know about the multiple saves is, or multiple games is, yes, you can have multiple games on each page. Yes, you can have them saved to each page and have their own save files. But I have not yet found a way to actually make it so you can extract the individual saves. So yeah, you can back up your save files from each page and you can continue playing even if you want to play later but you can't import it to an emulator you can't flash them back to the original cartridge and they no longer have the original headers so if you had a multi-game with um, Pokemon like red version in it 
and you wanted to use it in Pokemon Stadium, or you wanted to use it in uh, Monster Brain, or you wanted to just export your Pokemon, the only way you could do it is through a link cable and trading. So that's just one big thing to keep in mind. Uh, ROM hacks, again, really nice. Uh, the, the main way I'd say use it is have one page for whatever game you're playing, have your backup page with like your arcade style games. Like if you have a bunch of games that use passwords or just don't have saving because they're again arcade style games like Pac-Man or whatever, that would be great. You can play all those games you normally wouldn't carry around with you. Just put them on slot two and you don't have to worry about saving or backup your save files since they're, um, you'll never really need those save files again. Um, and for save and for slot for page one, I keep calling them slot for pa slot one or page one, have whatever game you're currently playing. So let's say you were really interested in a ROM hack or a fan translation or something. Use that in um, page one. And then you can play it, you can back up your save file, put it on your computer, put it on the original cartridge, do whatever you want with it. And then whenever you say like, huh, I could really go for some playing some Pac-Man right now, or I really want to play Mario um, Deluxe again, then just boot into page two and then you can play it. So overall, I think this is a really nice option. You just have to know what you're buying into. Yes, you can have two really good, solid saving um, playing experiences, but if you're looking to play your entire library, this is probably not the best option for you. As again, exporting when you have multiple saves, as far as I know, there's no way to do it. Um, the guy who works on the program, he made it from scratch and he hasn't, he hasn't worked on it since 2013. So I don't think he's gonna make a save splitter, but if there is one, I'll make a new video about it in the future. So, okay guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all later. Don't forget to share this with your friends who think, who may also be interested in this. And uh, post a comment saying what you think about this. Is, would you rather have this or would you rather have an EverDrive? All right. See you guys later. Bye.